The VBA message box is a very powerful feature of VBA, but most users are unaware of what it can do. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily configure the message box for any situation using a few simple parameters. Creating a basic message box is very simple. We just use MSG box and then the text that we want to display on the message box. When we run the code, you can see that it displays the message box with an OK button. These are the message box parameters. Now, unless you have a local help file, which is very rare nowadays, then you won't need parameter four and five. So the other three parameters, you can see that two have the square brackets, and this means that they are optional. In other words, if you don't supply a parameter, what happens is they use a default. So the default for the buttons parameter is to use the OK button, and the default title is Microsoft Excel. Let's now change the title of the message box. If we put a comma after the function here, you can see the IntelliSense highlights the current parameter. Now we want to use the next parameter, which is title, so we put in another comma, and you can see title is now highlighted. So title is the third parameter, and we change the text. Now when we run the code, you can see that it displays the message box, and we have our new title. We use the second parameter to specify the buttons we want to use on the message box, and you can see a list of them here. So they're quite self-explanatory. For example, if we use VB OK Cancel, what we'll get is the OK and the cancel button. If we use VB yes no, you'll see that we'll get a message box that has the buttons yes and no. And in our final example, you can see that we use VBA abort retry ignore. And again, it brings up the dialogue with these three buttons. So when we let the users click on a button, we obviously want to get the return value. So we want to know which button that they clicked. So we do this as follows. Now, if you go to the message box and add a space, you'll see all the parameters. And you can see at the very end there, it says as VB message box result. And this means this is the return value. So we can declare a variable of this type. Now, if you click on this type and press Shift F2, what happens is it brings up a list of all the possible members of VB message box result. And you can see they're very straightforward. They're basically just the name of the buttons, such as abort, cancel, ignore, and so on. So how we use this variable is as follows. We say result equals message box, and we add the parentheses at either end, and this will give us the result in the variable. So what we can do then is we can compare the result to one of these options, and we're gonna say if the result equals VB, yes, then we're gonna give a message box saying that the user clicked yes. Now we run the code, we click on the yes button and you'll see it says you clicked yes. Now imagine we change the button to abort, retry, ignore. We can then check for the abort button in the very same way by simply changing this to VB abort and then our message will say you clicked abort. We can do more checks by just adding a simple else if statement and this will check if we click the ignore button. And we run the code, you can see it provides the buttons and when we click on abort, what you'll see is that it says you click the board. Now if we run it again, and this time we click ignore, you can see that when we click ignore, it displays you clicked ignore. So this is how we deal with return values from the message box. We've seen that the second parameter of the message box allows us to configure the buttons, but it also allows us to determine which icon we want to be displayed. And you can see from this list that we've got a choice of four. So if we use VB critical, you can see here that it displays the critical icon. Now, if we change this to exclamation and then we run it, you can see it displays the exclamation icon. Now, if we want to combine this with the buttons, we can do it very easily. So first of all, we're just going to change the text here. So we add VB yes, no to include the yes, no buttons. Then we add the plus sign. And then what we do is we say VB question. So we can combine the question icon with the yes, no buttons. And you can see it here on the screen. We've got the yes, no buttons and the question icon. If you look at the message box here, you can see that a board is highlighted, which means if we press the enter button, a board will be selected. So we can use the second parameter to select the button we want to be highlighted. And we use VB default buttons one, two, four. So one basically means the first one and two as we used here sets retry to be highlighted. So this is another option that we have with the second parameter. If you're a little bit confused about what you can combine, then this chart on my website will explain it very simply. 
So here I've got all the constants grouped into five separate groups, one to five. And the way it works is that each time you use message box, you can pick one item from each group and you won't run into any problems. For example, in this case, we want to display the yes, no buttons with the question icon. We want the second button to be our default button. We want the message box to be modal to our application and we want the text to be aligned to the right hand side. So you see that we can combine them all in this case. Now, in reality, we generally only use the first two groups, and this is the buttons and the icons. There are some cases where you use the others, but most of the time you'll just use the first two groups. You now know how to get the most out of the message box, but what if you want to have more advanced interactions with your users? Make sure to watch this video where I create a data entry user form.